Jason Starkman has spent his entire professional career bettering the lives of those around him. As the owner of a State Farm agency in Newport Beach for the past nine years, Jason and his team work hard each day to make sure their clients, friends, and family are all properly protected from everyday risk. Prior to opening his insurance agency, Jason owned an entertainment and hospitality company, organizing events and travel for young adults from all over California. Jason graduated from UCI in 2003 with a degree in sociology. While at UCI, he was involved in uh, over a dozen campus organizations. How many of you were involved in student organizations on campus? Show of hands. Good, okay, almost all of you. Jason can tell you that's the way to go. And Jason attributes a lot of his post-collegiate success to the experiences and relationships he created while he was at UCI. Jason volunteers and has sat on the board of several nonprofits in Orange County and has helped coach groups of veterans on interviewing and obtaining a job once they have left the military. Jason strongly believes in the power of connecting people to help them better their lives and the philosophy of giver's game. In his free time, Jason enjoys wakeboarding, playing hockey, and going to concerts with his amazing wife, Brianna, a fellow anteater. Welcome, Brianna. And we're about to get the program started. So join me in welcoming Jason Starkman. Thanks, Jeff. Can you guys hear me? Yes, perfect. Hey, quick show of hands. Um, are there any heart transplant surgeons in the room? Heart transplant surgeons in the room. Cool. Anybody have any immediate family members, brothers, sisters, mom, dad, at a hospital right now about to have surgery? Awesome. So that means there's no reason for us to be touching our cell phones for the next 90 minutes. So help me out, you guys. Keep your phones away. Um, just a huge pet peeve of mine. Try and keep them away. I promise you guys, I'm going to make this entertaining. We'll keep you guys away, you know, entertained. Phones on the table, all that kind of stuff. Throw them in your pockets, your purse, your backpack. Uh, appreciate it. Um, second, I am super passionate about helping people out and about life. And sometimes I sort of get into a tangent, into a story. Occasionally a curse word pops out of my mouth, so I apologize for that in advance. If you guys hear a PG-13 or a rated R word come out of my mouth, I apologize. Um, I think we're all adults and you guys will be okay with it. Um, and last but not least, um, this is 100% today all about you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, you know, again, answer some questions, talk about some stories. Um, afterwards, I'm gonna open it up to any questions you guys have, as well as I'm gonna give everybody in the room my cell phone and my email address. So if for some reason you guys don't have a, you know, can't come up with a question right now, or you just don't have time for it, reach out to me anytime next week. I'm happy to help out anybody with any kind of question at all regarding jobs, UCI, life, anything like that. Sound good? Perfect, thanks guys. So, um, full disclosure, I know Jason pretty well. We go back to uh, our days as undergrads together. We're involved in a lot of the same things. And um, Jason is here because I know he has a lot of good advice to pass on. And, um, you know, we have this speaker series, What Matters to Me and Why, for alumni every quarter. And we've had some amazing speakers, but Jason um, is here because we think he may be one of the best. So, so welcome, Jason. Um, I've got a series of questions that I'm going to ask, but you're the star of the show. Um, so if I am talking too much like I am now, you guys just throw some paper at me or something. Uh, I'll try to get out of the way. Uh, so let's learn a little bit about you before we get into it. Um, talk about your position and what do you do? Yeah, so currently own a uh, State Farm Insurance Agency um, over here in Newport Beach, about two minutes away from campus over on Jamboree. Um, opened up the business about nine years ago. And for lack of a better term, it's set up like a franchise, right? So there's obviously like the big brand of Mothership State Farm. And then you got individual folks like myself that, you know, own our own little miniature chapter of State Farm, basically. So I'm in charge of being able to, I get to hire on my own employees, choose my own office location, all of that. But then I've got the marketing national support of a larger company like, you know, such as State Farm, because obviously I don't have the budget to be advertising on the Super Bowl or NCAA finals or anything like that. Um, so I got three great people that work for me, looking to probably bring on a couple more next year. And my job every single day is just to help people out with their insurance and everything from basic car insurance, um, renter's insurance that, you know, all young folks need up to homeowner's insurance. I do insurance for a lot of businesses. Um, La Ventina's down in the peninsula, Gina's Pizza right over here, they're clients of mine. Um, so helping out just to make sure in cases of fire that the business owner obviously gets to get all their stuff replaced. Um, we do a lot of life insurance, just financial planning for folks and whatnot. So 
Um, there's a lot of stuff that you guys grow up, you know, get older that you'll start to see. There's unfortunately, you know, car accidents and random things that go on. My job is to help make sure if any of that kind of stuff happens, that you're okay and you sort of get back to, to normal life after the accident. So thanks for sharing. Talk about the steps you took to get where you are today. Uh, what was your journey like and how did you decide on this industry? So I, yeah, um, so I definitely have got a very, or I guess what I think of as a little bit of an unconventional journey. Um, but what you guys will see when you start talking to more alumni is that very few people have a very straightforward trajectory from when they're 18 years old till they're retiring. Okay, most people think they're going to do this and then graduate school and sort of bounce all over the place. Um, and that was myself for sure. Um, so I came down to go to school in 1998 here. Um, I definitely did not have the grades that all of you guys had to get into the school. Otherwise, I would have never gotten in if it was difficult as it is right now. Um, I grew up in LA and came down to go to UC Irvine um, 1998 and had no idea what I was going to do. So I was undecided, undeclared. And then I think I jumped over to psychology for a minute and then social science is undecided. And then I think I'm graduating with sociology. Um, and when I was in college, I sort of assumed that I was going to be doing some kind of um, I started doing a lot of events through different non or different organizations I was involved with and sort of figured out I'm working in like the event space. So working either like a large hotel or, um, you know, some kind of like convention hall or something like that. And um, so throughout the, the time when I was in college, had a bunch of different, you know, part time jobs and whatnot. And one year, my, uh, one of the days, my senior year of college, um, my roommate calls me and he goes, hey, Jason, you got to get back to, the, to, you know, the house where we're living at. There's this guy who's sitting out here, wants to meet you. He owns a bar in the area and wants to talk to you about something. So I'm like, um, who is this guy? What, what's going on here? Um, so it turns out it was actually an owner of a bar down in Newport Beach. And he was trying to basically get a bunch of college students to start coming down to his bar every single Thursday night for college night. And at the time, nobody used to go to this dude's bar, okay? So he was wanting to get a bunch more college students to go down there. He heard that I knew a bunch of people around campus. So he started talking to me and I was a little bit cocky. And I said, all right, well, pay me a couple hundred bucks a week and I'll bring all my friends down there. And he goes, all right, I can do that. Um, and I said, well, this is my buddy Andy over here, and he's a DJ, and you got to pay him a couple hundred bucks as well. And between the two of us, we'll, just, we'll pack your bar. No, no big deal, dude. And the guy's like, that's it? Like, that's it. We'll take care of it. Um, having no idea what I was sort of getting myself into, of course. But, you know, from there, we just started inviting our, all of our buddies out. And, you know, first week, the place was packed. Second week, the pa place was packed. And it was a good time. We started sort of making some good money and uh, got to hang out, you know, with friends at a bar. Pretty easy, pretty easy kind of deal. Um, same time, uh, another guy came over onto campus, and this guy owned a student travel company. So putting together um, spring break trips and snowboarding trips for college students, right? And so he sort of you know, found me as well and said, hey, I hear you do this promoting thing and blah, blah, blah. I've got this big you know, ski board, snowboarding trip coming up. Do you want to come work for me and bring all, my, you know, bring all your friends on the snowboarding trip? And I'd never been snowboarding before, so I figured I should probably figure that thing out first. Um, but from there, I started you know, inviting a bunch of friends. And now when I was coming now, so this was both my senior year. I was having a good time. I was still in school and working part-time. And when I was getting closer to graduating, both of them ended up offering me full-time jobs. So the guy who owned the bar, the bar actually is Sharky's, which I'm sure most of you guys have been to. Um, so <laughs> so um, the, guy, the owner of Sharky said, hey, you know what? Why don't you just keep doing this, you know? And, and, but let's go ahead and switch it on to like a little bit of commission type of deal. So the more people you bring out, the more money I'll pay you. But if you're not bringing a lot of people, we're not going to pay you a lot of money. And I said, all right, I can do that. And... The ski snowboarding guy said, hey, you know what? Separate than just a college thing, we've got a whole high school division. And the area where I had grown up, up in LA and Santa Barbara, the salesperson had just left. So they said, why don't you come work full time for us and go sell you know, high school and college snowboarding trips? By the way, that job's commission only. And I go, what, what is commission only? I don't even understand what this means. Um, commission only means I've got no hourly, no salary, no money at all unless I sell something. But I was 22 at the time and sort of stupid and said, sure, let's do this. You know, why not? Um, so when I graduated now, my first two jobs, I was still promoting on Thursday nights and I was working for this student travel company up in LA. Um, first year selling stuff was really, really difficult. Um, I think I made like $18,000 after my entire full year of working there. Um, I was not having a good time. Um, I was working 12, 14 hour days, making calls. Just, it was just not clicking at all at the student travel company. And so, and the student travel company sort of runs like seasonally because it's based around a school year, right? So as the school year was sort of coming up, I was sort of thinking about it and I was talking to my dad and my friends and, and you know, you gotta remember at the time in 03, the job market was very similar to what you guys are getting into, which is awesome, okay? There is like no unemployment right now. You guys will easily be able to find jobs. 03, it was the exact same thing. All my friends were getting into mortgages and financial planning and whatnot. 
So I had a lot of friends making a lot of money and I was making no money. Um, so I was about to quit and I said, you know what? I can't go out on the bottom of this whole thing. Um, let me do one more year. Let me learn this thing, learn how to sell this thing, get better at it, and then I'll quit. Um, so second year ended up getting better. Third year, fourth year got a lot better. And now at this point, by the time I was a fourth, by the time I was like my fourth year of doing this, um, still commission only, but I was making a lot of money. I got to make my own hours. I never worked on Fridays because I think working on Fridays is sort of silly. Um, so I worked a lot of hours Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and a little bit less. And the thing that I was really enjoying about the job was every single time I was closing a sale or a deal, I knew I was making more money on this. Um, so that sort of motivated me as far as, okay, work harder, make more money. Uh, Want to take a day off? No problem. No, I don't have a boss or anyone telling me I can't take a day off and just sort of did it. Um, so I did that for about four or five years. From there, left, went to work for Marriott for a year, so went back to what I was thinking I was going to do. And that job was the complete opposite of what I've been doing before. Marriott was a straight salary. I had to be at my desk at 8.01 in the morning. I had to be there till five o'clock. I couldn't stay over. Um, if somebody wanted to talk in the evening, I couldn't do it because I wasn't allowed to have overtime. And I got paid a salary and a really, really small commission. And I had no motivation to work at all. I was completely bored at work. Um, because as much as I worked, as much as I sold, I was gonna get paid the exact same amount of money. So for me personally, coming off of four years of work hard, make more, get lazy, don't, um, this was a really, really tough job. So I worked there still for about a year. I knew I didn't want to put in a year, sort of learn what I was doing. Um, worked there for a year, left and started an event, another event coordinating company back to sort of what I was doing before. And after about two years of that, I said, okay, time to try and find something a little bit more long-term. Um, I did not see myself being 50 years old and still doing nightclubs and spring break trips and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so a buddy of mine, a guy I actually met at UC Irvine, was opening up a State Farm Insurance Agency at the time. He was opening up his agency up in LA. And the training facility for anybody who's opening a State Farm agency was right here in Irvine. So he was coming down every other week doing his like six month internship and we had lunch and he was talking to me and said, hey, you gotta become a State Farm agent. This is a great deal, a great deal. And I looked at him, I said, insurance sounds terrible. Like that is the most boring thing in the world. I've been doing spring break trips and fun stuff for 10 years. Um, insurance sales guy is just, you know, an old white guy with coffee stains and cigarette breath and the whole thing. And I just had this like, this total bad vision of an insurance sales guy. Um, my buddy Lionel started talking to me a lot more about the opportunity though, and I started looking into it. And I loved the fact that I'd be able to own my own business. And yet I'm not super creative, so I didn't have to actually have to create the product or the business. I didn't have to come up with my own restaurant concept or my own t-shirt company or my own design. That was already sort of there for me from State Farm. The product was already there, yet I got to you know, at least have the flexibility to bring in my own people and sort of do it my own way and whatnot. Um, so interviewed for the, uh, the, the, you know, the opportunity to open up my own agency and first time out, actually got denied. And I was super, super bummed. Um, they sort of said, hey, you know what? You just don't have no experience right now. Um, so I ended up having to take six months, sort of reevaluate, recreate my own business plan, went out and got some additional like insurance licenses and whatnot and then went back, re-interviewed six months later and um, got approved. And so went through the internship and opened up uh, our doors in 2011. Um, first couple of years were definitely a little more of a challenge than I expected, but you know, after those first couple of years, got off to a little bit better of a trajectory and uh, nine years later, here we are. So long, long story there for you, but well, random path. <laughs> long story, random path, but it's kind of illuminating because this is, um, not probably what you predicted, right? And for many, all of us in this room, your career is probably not gonna be what you predict. Uh, we, we hear this from alumni all the time, and this, this is a known thing. Uh, people change their careers all the time. And oftentimes they'll wind up in careers, jobs that you had no idea, no preparation for. And it's not what your professors were talking about in the classroom. It's not what your major is related to. And that is more often the case than, than you might think. Uh, I, can, I can say the same thing. Um, so different kinds of careers, career changes, but uh, a lot of your opportunities came from people who had heard about you or knew that you had, like the first opportunity you had, someone came and knocked on your door because they heard about your connections. So maybe talk about how you became that person uh, and what you were involved in during your time at UCI that kind of led you there. Yeah, um, so I was definitely not the most outgoing social person in high school, um, just sort of the average high school guy, you know, had my five, six friends and my girlfriend and sort of did the high school thing. Um, came over to UC Irvine, 
um, was doing the dorm thing freshman year. It was all right, you know, I had, a, I had a few friends. My roommate and I got along pretty well and a couple other folks, um, but was definitely trying to find something else. So I ended up getting involved in a fraternity, um, and that sort of from there really sort of took off and got me involved in a lot of other stuff at UCI. So throughout the time I was at UCI, I was involved in our fraternity, um, Greek Song Fest, which is a huge um, student-run nonprofit. Um, I was on the UCI like club roller hockey team. Um, I was involved in housing. I was a community programmer for Roya Vista. Um, I think I did some stuff for ASUCI as well. So you know, for me, it was just a matter of just trying to meet as many different folks as I possibly could around campus um, that I had just different connections with and um, really just getting to know a lot of people. And I just had a gut feeling, I don't know why, but I sort of had a gut feeling that the more people I was able to sort of meet and get to know, the better life would become. Um, never in a million years knowing that I would use, you know, use that to promote nightclubs or 20 years later sell life insurance to people that I met in the dorms for them and their kids. I mean, I'd never in a, in a million years would have made that connection, but it ended up being a perfect fit over the, the 20 year time. So uh, you put yourself out there when you were here by getting involved. And everyone in this room is involved in something on campus, right? Uh, that is one of the most powerful things that UCI has to offer you, aside from your degree. So Jason and I both, I think, encourage you to build your networks as, as large as possible uh, when we do alumni receptions at every one, we ask everyone to connect with each other on LinkedIn. Um, you never know when those connections will come in handy down the road. And of course, it's even more impactful when you do it in person. So uh, back to UCI, what is one thing, even though you did a lot, what is one thing you wish you had done that you didn't have the chance to do while you were an undergrad here? A um, couple things. One, just, you know, uh, one sort of sounds a little bit silly, but my roommate in college and I always wanted to do this. We always wanted to be a campus tour guide. Um, I just, I don't, you know, you're a tour camp, guide? Yeah, camp, that's awesome. I'm really jealous. Reps. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just sort of seemed like a fun deal. And again, um, you know, I was, I was talking to somebody, you know, that I was coming over here and doing this whole thing. And UCI is a lot different now. Like right now, it's cool to be from UCI, okay? In the late 1990s, nobody even knew what the hell UC Irvine was or where it was or anything like that. Um, so myself, my buddies, we had a lot of pride in UCI, so we wanted to be like the campus tour guides telling these freshmen like, hey, this place is awesome, like you guys gotta come here, you know? Um, but unfortunately, we just kept missing the application date, so I never did that. Um, <laughs> and, and SPOP was the other one that I wish I would have done. Um, I applied for SPOP my sophomore year, I got rejected, and immaturely um, just sort of had a bitterness towards reapplying, which again, you look back and you're like, that was so stupid. Um, so I never really, re I never reapplied, but definitely was something that all of my friends, including the big guy next to me, um, did multiple times and just had a really, really good experience. So um, I'm sure that program's still around. Um, that's definitely one that I wish I would have done when I was on campus. And I think everyone has something that they don't accomplish when they're here. You know, get involved, do everything you can. For me, that was study abroad. I didn't, I never got the chance to experience another culture with the amazing programs that UCI offers. So. You just think ahead and think about what you want to prioritize because you can't do it all and there's so much to do. So uh, Jason, what were the most valuable lessons you learned um, while you were here at UCI? And um, how did your time at UCI impact your journey in life uh, personally and professionally? Yeah, so one for sure was the network and we'll get back to that one in a second. But one of the really you know things that I didn't even realize was important until I was an adult now as I interview people and meet with people was time management. And it sounds a little bit silly, you know, but again, we're gonna, I'm gonna age myself here. But when I started school, I had no cell phone, okay? We literally had a landline, like plugged into the wall in the dorms. Um, I got my first, my buddies and I got our first cell phones when we were seniors in college, okay? So we had an actual like paper calendar, big old binder kind of deal that we just carried around. And I got used to using a calendar when we were in school. Um, and so from there, you know, when I was in school, there wasn't really a whole lot of very important stuff. I had a couple of midterms and a test and, you know, my brother's birthday, you'd write that in a calendar or whatever it was. And that was sort of it. Um, and then from there, though, as life got busier and I was doing more stuff on campus than graduating and then sort of weaving in all kinds of craziness in life, I've just become very, very good at managing my time, doing things I want to be doing, being able to get done everything I want to do. And it all relates back to using a calendar. Um, so one of my biggest things I recommend for you guys, and again, if it's an online deal or, you know, an actual old school paper, whatever it's going to be, have one place that you put everything having to do with your life. And I recommend just starting out when you get home, you know, grab your midterm dates and your finals dates and just plug them on a calendar. Um, and then from there, start putting in other stuff. Oh, going home for, you know, 
the Dodger game, whatever it's going to be, stick that on there. And not just putting stuff on there, but each morning you're getting up, take a look. All right, cool. Here's what I got going on today or the night before. And just sort of get into that habit. Because um, a lot of folks, I mean, I've got adults that I run into at 35 years old that are still just running around, you know, chicken, like chickens with their head cut off, having no idea what to do. Um, so time management ones for sure. Um, probably one of the biggest things though, like we already sort of touched on, was building the network. And we've got no idea who we're going to meet that's going to completely change our lives. Um, for myself, first week at UCI here, I went out and sort of, you know, started meeting some guys who were playing hockey with, and I ended up meeting this random dude named Lionel. And so we were playing hockey together for fall quarter freshman year, having a good time, meeting him and some other buddies. And three, four months later, he said, hey, you know what, I'm part of this other organization. We got some free food tonight. Why don't you come out to this other deal? And I said, oh, what's going on? He goes, well, it's Spoons, which the old, uh, where Taco Bell is right now, there used to be a place called Spoons. So I went over there and it ended up being a recruiting, like a rush event for our fraternity. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Sat down, ended up sitting down with a gentleman next to me and these two guys over here. And I can distinctly remember who they are because they're three of my best friends to this day. Um, walking into that room completely changed my life. I would not be sitting here had I not gone in and met with these random dudes. And that wouldn't have happened had I not met the other guy at the hockey deal. Um, coincidentally, the same guy I met playing hockey is the one who got me into State Farm. So we've got no idea who these folks are that we're sitting next to and how powerful these connections are going to be. Um, so building out the network, meeting people, um, meeting people, I would say, with, you know, sort of similar interests um, or similar themes, I should say. So all of you guys right here in this room, you've got a similar theme in that you are choosing to learn and actually go ahead and do something that's going to help you guys out when you're graduating, right? You had other options to be somewhere else tonight doing something else. But you all sort of said, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and you know, put ourselves out there, meet some alumni, see what's going on. Um, same kind of deal you know, just when you're in class, when you're you know, getting involved with other, any other organizations, being able to actually build that network and then staying in touch with each other. Um, exchange contact information, stay in touch. The UCI's community is really, really a, gr a bright group of people, okay? Um, my mom's in her uh, mid-60s, three, four months ago, she started having some pain in her leg and, and it turns out she needed to go get a hip replacement surgery. So she asked me about it. She goes, hey, I'm a little bit weary about this whole thing. I don't know if I should do it. I go, oh, well, hang on here. My buddy from college, Daniel, he's an orthopedic surgeon at Kaiser. Let's, let's talk to him. So she goes, really? I go, yeah, call Daniel. This is a guy that I met when I was like 19 years old. Um, graduated UCI uh, bio top of his class, UCI med type of top of his class, fellowship at SC, fellowship in Pittsburgh. Pretty bright dude. Um, so my mom gave Daniel a call. He answered the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Starkman's mom, no problem. What's going on? Send me over your x-rays. So Daniel sat down, talked to her. She goes, hey, I don't do shoulders, or I'm sorry, I only do shoulders, I don't do knees or hips, whatever it was, but Dr. Lee is the best hip surgeon in all of Los Angeles. Here's his cell phone number, give him a call and tell him we're buddies. So here we are, 20 plus years after I graduated, my mom needs a surgery, and a dude that I met drinking beers when we were 18 is the one who's able to help her out. Um, pretty cool, right? I mean, like that was, that was a pretty cool deal. My mom, after the surgery, goes, oh my goodness, thank you so much, Dr. Lee was amazing, and Acevedo's amazing, and all this stuff, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I won't tell you stories what I used to do when we were 18, but um, <laughs> this is the power of UCI though. Um, and so really being able to create that network and just staying in touch with people. And it's gonna be people from different backgrounds. Um, you know, I grew up in a you know, sub boring suburban area up in LA. Uh, one of my closest friends is a guy who owns a farm 10 minutes from the Mexican border. Um, totally a guy that I would have never met if I had not gone to UC Irvine. But we have a lot in common and still stay in touch all the time. So really just building out that network. Um, and then the third thing, you know, I think it was, you know, third like most invaluable lesson is learning how to communicate. And, you know, we were sort of half joking around earlier on about putting the cell phone thing down, but this is something I'm just super passionate about is just being able to actually sit down with another human being and have a conversation. And that's going to be whether you guys, you know, get to class five minutes early, sit next to the guy or the girl sit next to you. Hey, how you doing? I'm Jason. What's going on? And just being able to actually communicate with other people is so valuable to be able to take into whatever you're going to be doing in your life. Um, the surgeon that did my, you know, my mom's hip surgeon, Dr. Lee, my mom's got no idea if that guy was an amazing surgeon and, you know, could do a really good stitch or not. What made her feel really good about it was that he was able to explain to her what was going on and was actually able to, to connect with her with her concerns, with her fears, all of that. So again, he had learned obviously somewhere along the lines how to be a good communicator, not just how to be a good surgeon or a good doctor, the stuff they're teaching in class. Um, so again, just learning how to communicate, um, learning how to actually just, you know, talk with each other, talk with adults, talk to people that you've never met before, maybe you don't think you'd ever have anything in common with, 
um, is huge. And you guys have got, what was it, 50,000 people that are within a half a mile of you every single day to talk with. So there's no shortage of people to be able to connect with, for sure. Now, it comes natural to Jason. Because as you might surmise, he may be the most outgoing and uh, conversation starting person in this room. Uh, but practically speaking, that's not all of us. And I understand when Jason says learn how to communicate, that is probably easier said than done for some of us, for a lot of us at UCI, to be honest. Um, but we have resources for that. So you're here in the campus ecosystem right now as students. Um, there are a lot of resources you may not know about or haven't tapped into yet for communicating both for job interviews, for example, through the Division of Career Pathways. There are workshops, um, counselors who can help you with that. And also in the professional world through the Division of Continuing Education, there are just a myriad of resources that most of us coming through UCI only scratch the surface. So I encourage you to check those out or talk to any staff like myself who can kind of point you in the right direction. Another thing is Jason made so many connections here as a student. Um, and if it's not too late, uh, even after graduation, our whole alumni association puts on events and opportunities to connect alumni with one another all year long. We did about 150 events last year alone. And that is your alumni network that you are graduating into. So even if you did not make as many connections as you would have liked as an undergrad, when you are a degreed alum, you come to events, come to a reception, join a chapter. I've, had, I've heard alumni chapter leaders, uh, because all 40 chapters have their own leadership boards, say some of the same stories that Jason had about how they got a referral to someone else for a job or a doctor's referral or whatever it may be from the alumni community. There are more, there are 200,000 of us. So keep that in mind. Uh, did you have something to add? Yeah, I just, um, even if, you know, like, like Jeff was saying, um, it's not, you know, too late kind of deal. Try your heart, even if you're graduating in June, right? Um, try your hardest just to be able to connect with folks now. And I'm not saying that, you know, me and this guy are gonna become best friends, but let me just sort of try and put myself out there and just start communicating. And the reason for that is that right now, you guys are in a really concentrated space of other young adults that are all going through the exact same thing as you guys are, right? Everyone's got concerns about graduating and what are our plans after and nervous about this and nervous about that. And you guys are all around each other all the time. You're in a room, you know, you're in a lecture hall with 300 of your peers. Um, the real world, unfortunately, you don't have those opportunities as much. So if you can sort of, sort of start practicing just some of that just real basic, hey, how you doing? And trying to make some of those connections now while we're in school, then that way when you guys are graduating and you're at these other alumni events or other things that you're involved with or work or whatnot, it'll feel a little bit easier for you. Bless you. And uh, yet another add-on, how many of you have been uh, engaged in entrepreneurship anywhere on campus, whether it's the Entrepreneur Center or the Cove, UCI Applied Innovation? Okay, a couple hands. Uh, so whether or not you're, you're aspiring to be an entrepreneur, that is a phenomenal way to find connections as well. Um, similar kind of connection that you can make in a, in a closed room like this. We've had uh, connections within the alumni community where people have met business partners and started, at least in, in one example, a business that has had a multi-billion dollar acquisition. So you never know, like that moment that'll change your life, whether it's big dollars or companies or personal relationships and career paths. So. Uh, Jason, tell me more, um, what do you think has been your key to success throughout your journey? Yeah, I mean, we've sort of been touching on it a little bit, I guess maybe a theme throughout the last you know, few minutes here, but for sure, just the network. And I think it's a matter of just having people in your life you know, that you can trust, they're sort of trusted advisors, right? Um, I am absolutely not the smartest person in the world. I am probably not even close to the smartest person in this room. That doesn't matter. What matters is that I know sort of subject area experts that I can pick up the phone and go to, and they are intel extremely intelligent, most knowledgeable people I know in this sort of space. Um, if anything comes up about UC Irvine ever, whether it's a buddy of mine who's got a question about, you know, hey, I read this article about UCI, is this true? Or my grandma who's calling me and talking about some political crap that's going on at UCI, or whatever it's gonna be, I got my UCI go-to guy, it's Jeff. This guy knows more about UC Irvine than anybody on this campus, he's my guy. If I've got a tax question, I got my tax guy. 
I got a dental issue, a buddy of mine's my dentist. We obviously already discussed the surgeon. So I think it's a matter of just being able to figure out like who you guys have in your life that you're able to trust and that you're able to go to for different type of stuff. And it may not be a professional, you know, going to the dentist because I got a toothache. It could just be, hey, here's a certain buddy that just really is just a really good, good dude. And when I'm sort of having a rough day, this is the guy I'm gonna go to for this. Or this is somebody that I really look up to for business. I'm gonna go to them for that. So being able to have the, um, have the network and as well being, being okay to ask for help. Um, I think that's really, really key. Um, most alumni, most people out in the professional world want to help out those who are on the way up because all of us had one or two or a hundred people that sort of helped us when we were on our way up. But here's the deal though, alumni are not gonna walk around the campus and come up to you and say, hey, real quick, need some help finding a job? Hey, how are you? Can I help you find a job? Are you looking to get into medical school? Let's talk about that. That'd be really weird, okay? It's not gonna be happening. <laughs> um, Jeff and I were talking earlier today about the mentor program that, UCI, that the Alumni Association is putting together and exactly what Jeff told me, he goes, hey, here's our problem right now. We've got way too many alumni mentors and not nearly enough UCI undergrad mentees. So again, don't be afraid to ask for a little bit of help. Um, now that being said, nobody's just gonna give you a job because you asked for help. My job is not to just go ahead and, and get you guys a job immediately because you asked for it. My job though is to help out in preparing you guys for the interview and to help you guys get in one or both feet in the door. So if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I'm trying to get involved over at Blizzard. Do you happen to know anybody over at Blizzard? Um, I'm not gonna call my friend Daphne and say, hey, real quick, you gotta hire this guy, John, because he asked me to. Daphne's gonna laugh at me. But what I will do is say, hey, Daph, um, I got this guy, John, I met him at UCI, I've gotten to know him pretty well. Um, do you guys have any openings? Would you be able to sit down with John for 20 minutes and have him learn a little bit more about the company? And I promise you, she'll always say yes, and this is a real person, and I've gotten three people jobs at Blizzard. Um, so again, ask for you guys, you gotta be able to ask for help and go to your network. Um, other piece that's really just been a key to success for my, in my life, um, and it was not always like this, but um, doing the right thing the right way the first time. It just saves you guys a whole lot of damn headaches, okay? And I know it sounds really cliche and really obvious, right? But all of us do things in our lives every single day that we know isn't probably the right thing to do, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Whether it's texting and driving, or showing up to class late, or buying the Scantron, I don't know if you guys still have like test booklets for finals, but you know, we, we, know, we, got, we know we got a final coming up on Thursday, so today is, you know, let's, or, you know, let's say we got a final coming up on, on Monday next week, today is Thursday. I should stop at the student center right now and pick up my, my little book. But I'm gonna go ahead and wait until Monday morning and do it two minutes before the class. And so then I end up running into the bookstore. I'm late now, I run into the final, I'm sweating, I'm not comfortable, and I end up bombing the final because I was just super stressed out, right? That was preventable. Like, we know what the right thing to do is. Um, again, didn't always do that, but as I've gotten older, it's just so much more simple just to sort of do what we know is the right thing, whether it's through experience or just, you know, uh, friends experience or anything like that the first time, it just keeps life really, really simple. Um, so again, I know it sounds cliche, I know it sounds sort of like a, an old man preaching kind of deal, but you guys already know what to do. Um, don't show up late, uh, don't text and drive, go buy the, scan, go buy the uh, test booklet two days before your test, study for your midterms, um, it ain't that hard. So just doing the right, the right stuff will uh, make life easy for you guys. So a uh, quick time check, we have, I've got a couple more questions to ask Jason. But My bad. We're gonna, no, 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 we're good. <laughs> I just want to encourage you all because we are going to have Q&A after that. So in about five, ten minutes. So think about questions you want to answer him. And it, it seems like you know now he will give you a straight answer, right? It'll, it'll, it'll tell, you, tell it like it is. After that, uh, we'll actually have dinner. We'll have food and you can grab food from the foyer, come on back in, and then we'll do some networking, okay? A couple more questions though. Uh, Jason, what is your advice for current students looking to pursue a successful career, as um, everyone here is. Yeah, no, of course. I think, and I've, I've been mentoring students at UCI now for 18 years probably, 17 years since I graduated, and watched the ebb and flow of students as just, you know, things sort of change. There are certain things that are really different, certain things have not changed at all. Um, the biggest thing I've seen over the last few years is you guys have got a lot of pressure on yourselves, and you guys gotta take that off, okay? I, don't, I can't fully pinpoint whether it's coming from each other or your parents or social media or what, but I feel that right now, there's just like a lot of pressure that I'm graduating in, on June 17th and on June 18th, I need to have this career figured out that I'm gonna do for the entire rest of my life. Take that pressure off yourselves. It ain't gonna happen. 
Okay, I know thousands and thousands of people since we've graduated. I think I've got four friends that are doing right now what they were doing the day they graduated. Maybe three. Um, so first of all, just sort of take that pressure off yourselves. Just sort of keep trying to move forward. So don't worry about trying to find the perfect job. Worry about finding a job, okay? Um, so interview at a lot of different places. Put yourselves out there. Um, utilize the alumni network. Come to this building. Talk to the folks that work here. Talk to SA. Um, the alumni network is huge at UC Irvine. So you guys got to utilize the resources that are in front of you. Um, and again, the easiest thing to do is not even say, can I get a job? But hey, um, your, your company intrigues me. Can I come learn a little bit more? Can I, can I come take 20 minutes of your time and learn a little bit more about you and what you do? Okay, that's it. Anybody who you guys call and ask that to is going to say sure and sit down with you. I promise you that. No one is going to say no. So again, just sort of put yourself out there. Um, take a little bit of pressure off yourselves um, and just go in and get a job. Like I said, we don't know exactly know where we're gonna, where we're gonna land. Um, your first job as well, work there for at least six months. I used to say a year, but now we're saying at least six months. Um, if, if you're working there for a week and a half, you're not gonna, a week and a half is not enough time to learn if you love it or hate it, okay? Um, stay there for at least six months. You guys can get some good experience. And then from there, sort of try and you know, figure out what else you're, uh, you're looking to do. Um, for the friends or for you know, people in the room that are thinking about doing law school, med school, grad school, take, this is one of the biggest pieces of advice, okay? If all the rest of my nonsense has not sunk in yet, if you guys are thinking about going to law school or med school, please listen up. Take a year off, okay? You want to go to law school, go spend a year in a lawyer's office. I don't care if you're pouring coffee and making Xerox, you know, making copies, go spend a year around lawyers in a law office. You're going to learn one of two things really quickly. You love it or you hate it, okay? If you hate it, guess what? I just saved you a couple hundred thousand dollars in student loans and three years of your time. If you love it, that's even more powerful because now when you are in school, in law school, and you're cranking it, you know, an all-nighter trying to study and get through your first year, you're gonna be really motivated to actually study because you know how much you loved working in a law office and you can't wait to do it again. Same kind of thing with medical school or anything else. Uh, med school, go work at a hospital, go work at a doctor's office, go play with blood, do you enjoy being around blood? Are you okay? Hey, we're laughing, but are you okay to be around sick people and people who are dying? That's what being a doctor is. Um, lawyers, you're not in law and order trial every single minute, okay? Most of the time, <laughs> you're typing stuff and reading stuff. That's what we're doing. So if you enjoy studying, that's your life as a, law, as, as a lawyer. So take a year. Um, I can't tell you how many friends of mine, unfortunately, went through law school, did the whole deal, a couple hundred thousand in student loan debt, and hate being lawyers. Um, and so they're not lawyers anymore, which they would have learned elsewhere. There's a much smaller version of, of that. You can dip your toes in the water. How many of you have heard of uh, the Job Shadow Program here at UCI? Job Shadow Program. Has anyone participated in it? Okay, awesome. Job Shadow Program is put on by Division of Career Pathways. It's over spring break, which is coming up. You can spend a day or more shadowing someone in their career, in their job, in the field, whatever it is, learn what it's like. Uh, and then some of those people even use that as a time to interview you. So if you're lost or if you just want to check something specific out, that's a great way we can connect you uh, in that way. So Jason, uh, my last question to you for now, any other life advice for our students? Um, yeah, just some sort of general young, you know, old guy to young folks uh, type of deal. Every meeting you're going to, bring a pen and a piece of paper or a pen and some kind of notepad or something like that. Um, I was talking to a buddy of mine, my friend Aaron, and I said, hey, you know, we're driving to Mammoth a couple weeks ago. I said, hey, I'm going to go do this talk at UCI. And he interviews a lot of people. He works for a big graphic design company. Go, what do you want to know? He goes, tell all these people to start bringing some damn pen, you know, pen and pad to their <laughs> interviews and tell them to show up on time, all right? Can't tell you how many people show up. And so Aaron will be meeting with them and he'll be like, hey, so why don't you go ahead and you know, take down this information? And the guy's like, um, can I borrow a pen? Uh, just makes us look unprofessional. So bring a pen and paper. Um, send thank you follow-ups to people, okay? We were discussing before, you know, you guys reaching out to alumni and this and that. Reach out to alumni, you know, whoever it's going to be. They're spending 20 minutes of your time. When you get back home that evening, send them a quick email. Frank, really enjoyed our time today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great rest of the week. Do it That's that it. day. Okay, do it that day. That follow-up is gold, all right? Um, it is gold. People remember that forever. Um, this one's a little bit silly, but something I didn't do enough in college. Drink a lot of water, 
Okay, and, I, and it sounds completely ridiculous, all right? When I was in college, I was always sick, okay? I was always under the weather for one thing. There you go, get a damn jug. I was always sick, and my mom was always saying, hey, you gotta drink more water, drink more water. I was laughing at her, I'm like, mom, this is the stupidest advice ever. I need to like not eat Del Taco, that makes sense. But then when I became an adult, honestly, just drinking a bunch of water, you're just gonna have the energy to get through life and sort of keep doing. Um, last ones, you guys. Um, something my dad told me years ago. And this is sort of just, you know, for you guys when we're getting out into the world, you know, first job and your first job, you might be making a little more money than this guy who's making a little more money than this guy or whatever it is. Um, my dad told me something some years ago and he said, hey, someone's always going to have a bigger house. And that was so, so true. You guys are always going to have friends that are making a lot more money and have a lot bigger of a house than you. And you're going to make a lot more money and have a lot bigger of a house than most people. Okay. So don't spend life trying to compare to those, you know, who are making more or less because it doesn't matter at all. Um, you guys are literally only racing against yourself. So try and sort of move yourself along with whatever, you're, whatever makes you happy in life. Um, but I'm gonna ruin the surprise, someone's always make more money than us. Someone's always gonna have you know bigger house, faster car, whatever it is, who cares? Um, and the last one, and unfortunately you know, on social media we don't always realize this, um, and on the, you know, the regular TV media and whatnot, but life is really good. You guys are actually living right now at the greatest time in the history of the world to be alive, okay? And if you don't believe me, Google it. There's a gazillion statistics <laughs> all about it, okay? Um, anything though from crime rates to health to everything like that, I mean, especially just the economy, you guys getting jobs. Um, you guys need to feel really good about your lives, your opportunity, especially here at UCI and what you guys are able to do when you get out of school. Um, so just feel, good, just feel really good about that. And um, yeah, and you guys, you know, again, get to know each other in the room, get to know other alumni, utilize this guy, um, you guys will do well. That's all I got for now. Thank you, Jason. Uh, think about questions, because we're gonna ask for questions right now. But before that, I wanna use this as an opportunity to say that anteaters will help anteaters. And that is one of the themes of Jason's life. You know, he's, he's kind of put himself out there. He's also paid it forward. So as you advance in your life, be sure to pay it forward to other anteaters. Um, we have an easy way to connect with alumni who are lined up to pay it forward, as Jason mentioned, on the Anteater Network. Raise your hand if you are on the Anteater Network already, if you have an account. About less than half the room. You probably haven't heard of it. If you're not, there are flyers on a registration table, but it is, uh, it's a website, it's a community just for Anteaters, for you to connect with a mentor who participated in the same student activities as you, maybe was the same major as you, or is in the career that you wanna get into. And we have more mentors than we have mentees. And that is because not enough students have um, taken advantage of the alumni community. So we invite you to take advantage of that community now and then be a part of it as you graduate. So, more questions for Jason. Who in the audience has a question? Um, we gonna, Leslie, are you gonna, Come around with the microphone. Okay, we have a first question up here. So, oh wow, that's loud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I'm always curious about and that I always like to ask people um, that come do these sort of events is why 20 years down the line, and I know you've continuously done that, you know, with all the organizations you've been involved in, but why do you continuously do this so far down, right? where you're experiencing four years of college and most of the people that leave kind of don't look back. Um, and they just think, you know, only forward and I'm only gonna advance and do what's good for me. Uh, what keeps bringing you back? Yeah, good, good question. I think that for me personally, it really comes down to what I had gotten when I was in your seats, right? Like I got so much out of UC Irvine and I've got friends that joined fraternities and joined clubs and organizations and just weren't as involved as I maybe was. And I got other friends that didn't join anything and are still really successful. It's not just a matter of joining, but I personally just got so much out of being an undergrad in the UCI community that if there's stuff that I, if there's a way I can help out you or you or whoever's in me in the room to actually sort of get ahead like that, I wanna be able to do that. And I mean, the list of people that helped me out along the way is endless. Um, so part of it's just a feel good type of deal for me to be able to give back to you guys. The other part, completely selfish, is remember we're talking about expanding my network. So my network does not only need to be 
38, 39, and 40 year olds, okay? Um, my network can be all of you guys. Like, you guys are the ones who, you know, in three, four, five years are gonna be working at the company that I'm gonna, when I'm giving the same spiel again, I'm gonna say, okay, I need to get somebody a job. Oh, you have to be working over at XYZ company. Let me go ahead and do that. So I see a lot of value selfishly in getting to know all of you guys as well and giving back. And, you know, again, it's not like you guys are graduating and are gonna be doing nothing. Um, you're all gonna be moving up in life as well. Why would I not wanna have that as a part of my network also? So that's the selfish part of it, is just to be able to continue growing the network. Um, and the giving back side is just to be able to help you guys out. More questions? I, I will add to that my, my perspective. Nobody asked, but I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> um, I, I live that same mantra every day of my life. So. <laughs> I uh, find a lot of personal fulfillment and happiness in life being part of communities. Not just being a member of an organization, but contributing to it and empowering others and making it better, just like Jason. Uh, for me, that is more important than the kind of car or, the, or how big the house is, because there's always going to be something else out there. And being a part of a community, especially the UCI community, which is very nurturing if you give it a chance and has so many resources for you, that you know, I, I got so much of that that I feel the need to pay it forward and be part of this community forever. And the Alumni Association, our goal is that everyone in this room and everyone on campus feels the same way and gets the same fulfillment out of it in life. More questions for Jason, and not me, I promise. Right here. <laughs> Thank you so much for your talk, Jason. I just have a, I, I have a question, since you're, um, you're currently an owner of a, of an agency, like sort of a business for like uh, any. I, this is just a question for like people who are considering like owning like future businesses, businesses and stuff. Are there like a, um, um, any major like mi like misconceptions or like quick like um, like pitfalls or stuff that you um, recognize when you first became an owner and like are things that we should consider and um, potentially avoid like. Yeah, no, great. To pay attention for. Yeah. yeah, great great question forever, uh, for sure. And if you've got like, you know, 25 days, um, I'll give you the whole list. But uh, no, um, the being a business owner thing is not for everybody. Two of my close friends, uh, my closest friends, Aaron and Dave, when I was opening up my State Farm agency, these guys looked at me like I was crazy, okay? They're like, why do you want to have people that are relying on you for, you know, for their paychecks? Why do you want to make no money early on? Um, why do you want to work all these hours? And these guys both have got awesome, very traditional jobs, right? They go to work at 8.30 in the morning, they leave at five o'clock. They thought I was nuts for opening up a business. I think they are absolutely nuts for having a boss and having to ask somebody for a raise, okay? If I want to raise, I go to work on Sunday morning, I make some more calls, I sell some more stuff. Um, it takes both sides of everything to sort of get through the world. So I guess one piece of advice would be, you know, figuring out what you do and don't enjoy doing sort of first, right? Um, so working for some other folks and then talking with other business owners as well. Um, downsized pitfalls of being a business owner, um, it all ends on you, that's it. Um, my employees get paid before I do. Um, my landlord gets paid before I do. Um, my electrical bill, my insurance bills, everything else gets done before I get paid. And then whatever's left over, I get to take home. Um, so I think that sort of misconception is people are gonna open up their business. And, and the other one I guess would just be time as well. Um, there is not a moment that I'm not thinking about my business, okay? It is, it never stops. I wish I could turn this thing off. My wife's here, she's sort of chuckling in the front row here. Um, we're always talking about insurance, okay? That's just, that's my business. Whatever your business is gonna be, you're always, that is always on. Um, so I think that people get it, you know, getting business owners and like, oh, well, my buddy Jason's always out playing golf or drinking beers, so I wanna be a business owner and not do anything wrong. Um, if you do not wanna think about work after five o'clock, being a business owner ain't for you. Um, if you wanna have the time flexibility though, to be able to go to kids' soccer games or work on Saturday instead of Tuesday or whatever you wanna be able to do, the business owner thing's for you. That help out a little bit? Real quick, cool, of course, good question. Oh, yeah. Um. <clears throat> So I'm like a computer science student, and as I get closer to graduation, I kind of think um, if I should go join like a big company and start there and kind of get stable first, or kind of join something smaller that may be the next big thing. So 
in a broad sense, how do you kind of choose between stability versus like a high risk, high reward kind of thing? Good question. It's sort of up, I mean, it, it's sort of up to you. So, so I think that I would look at it where you, you know, I'm not, I don't know, you know, very well personally. So, you know, again, assuming I'm gonna make some assumptions here, right? So assuming we don't have a mortgage, we don't have kids that are depending on us, something like that. Um, I would, you know, try and figure out what your, your baseline expenses are, right? And don't live at mom and dad's house. Okay. Sorry. But if your guys folks helped you out through the first 18 years of your life, then they got you to UCI and you guys graduate. And at 24, you're moving back to your mom's couch. Sorry, you're letting mom and dad down, okay? It just didn't work out. Um, so figure out what your expense is gonna be. And it's okay to, you know, share in a room with, you know, with a roommate, having, you know, having three or four roommates, having an old beat up car, whatever, who cares about that kind of stuff, right? So figure out what your baseline expenses are, okay? So if your baseline expenses are 2,000 bucks a month and working over that startup company, you're at least getting paid a guarantee of that 2,000 bucks a month and you wanna let it ride? Sure, let it ride, you're young. You don't have a mortgage, you don't have kids. It's time to do it, have a, have a ball. Um, but I wouldn't go work for free, go into debt, um, run up credit card debt, live on your mom's couch, this and that, for a pipe dream that may or may not happen. Because um, in my opinion, that's just not a safe gamble. So I'm okay to gamble a little bit, you know, make take a $30,000 a year job that might explode versus a 50 or an $80,000 a year job that you know is gonna be here, nothing wrong with that. Um, but at least make sure that you're covering your own type of stuff. And then maybe set the timeline for yourself. You know, maybe, maybe putting, you know, just sort of making a note to yourself. All right, cool, I'm gonna give this six months. I'm gonna give this a year, two years. Write on a little piece of paper, all right, two years. Um, and in two years, if you're still there and the company's not going anywhere and you're not feeling it, time to move. Um, so I think as long as you can cover your expenses, nothing wrong with that. Um, this flip side, of course, you go take the stable job for a year or two, there's always gonna be startups that are gonna want you. And now you've got a little bit more experience to be able to bring there as well. So I don't think either one is, is right or wrong. Um, you need to figure, sort of figure out what you're really feeling comfortable with. Um, and again, as long as you're able to cover like your minimum expenses, what you need to get taken care of without going into you know, further debt, yeah, maybe let's start up one ride for a little bit. Next question, up front. Who is it? Hi, so uh, I'm sure you have a very expansive network. I mean, especially going through college, having worked, and then owning your own branch of State Farm. Um, I'm sure that not every single one of your connections were positive. Um, how, through your experience, were you able to spot like sour, sour connections and like weed them out versus like people that were able to help you out along the way? Um, unless somebody has stolen from me, it's not a bad connection. Um, literally, there, I mean, unless this is just a bad person, and a bad person to me, okay? If, if, if somebody was, you know, sort of bad to my buddies, I'm gonna listen to it and pay attention. I'm not gonna just totally put blinders on and ignore it, but unless they've sort of stolen from me, there's no reason for me to burn that bridge yet. Um, so we're still gonna keep it, keep the connection alive. Now, that being said, I may not send that person jobs or bend over backwards for them, um, but unless somebody's actually just done me directly a lot of harm, we're at least gonna keep the connection alive. And then from there, we sort of, you know, it's, it's like credit. You're sort of starting to establish more and more credit, right? So as I start to, you know, get to know somebody a little bit better and maybe test them out by introducing them to one of you guys and like, they really took, you know, took good care of somebody at UCI and we start building, then we get to know, okay, this person is, you know, sort of like an A-list type of stock. This one's sort of B-list stock. And these folks are just sort of, you know, they're sort of there, you know? And who knows, there might be something that I've got a need for them or they got a need for me somewhere in here. Um, I don't really come across too many bad people and negative kind of stuff. Um, I was talking to alumni about 10 years older than, or you know, five, six years older than me, Bobby Barzi, UCI guy as well. And I was at his house a couple years ago and I'm like, dude, every time I'm at your house, everybody that I'm around is just awesome people. Like everyone here is really good. And he goes, yeah, dude, good people just breed good people. Like that's just what it is. Um, so I think that if we're doing the right thing and you're sort of putting yourself around the right people, it just sort of falls off, um, if that makes sense. And it sounds sort of simple, um, but that's just sort of it. You know, there's not a lot of like crap that comes around if you're just, always around, you know, around good, good folks. I'll add another reason for that is this. You know, we all have a shared connection already. We're all anteaters. And that sounds a little cliche, but we all met the same requirements to get into this university. Our alumni all went, went here in the same uh, lecture hall, same classrooms, same dorms, graduated. We have a commonality. And I have the luxury of seeing this at every event we do where we bring alumni from all walks of life together. 
we can always uh, share the similar experience of having developed ourselves at UCI. So that is a network that you are already in, and that's 200,000 plus people that you have a shared connection with. And I'm not saying everyone is, is gonna do right by you, but that is a phenomenal place to start. And it's gone incredibly well for the alumni who have mobilized with our chapters, with, um, with other engagements that we do. And by the way, the mentoring program we talked about, we've gotten tremendously positive feedback from the students and alumni who have participated in it so far. So it's been very good. We have time for another one question. Do we have any more questions in the audience? All right, last one up front. Uh, what fraternity were you a part of on campus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's campus sake. <laughs> good for that. All right. Very any good. other questions? Any, any other last questions? That question's sort of rigged. All right, there we, we've got one last question. Uh, no, I was going to ask if you know Jake from State Farm, but real, uh, <laughs> Serious question. Come on. real question. Um, I'm pretty sure you're a boss, so you, you interview people, right? What all, would, all the time. What would you say is like your number one tip for anybody who's trying to go to an interview and is nervous or anything? I mean, we're all probably going to be interviewing, so Great sooner question. or later. I'm going to give you guys the secrets here to all this stuff, and this is you guys are going to laugh, and please do laugh, because it's ridiculous how basic it is that you guys need to get this stuff taken care of, all right? You need to put on really some nice clothes. You need to show up for the interview. I want, I'm gonna say that once again. You need to show up for the interview, okay? I have got probably a 70% no-show rate. People who apply, reach out to me. This is not people I'm trying to get to come work for me. They email me, can I get a job? Sure, when do you wanna meet? We come, come in, no-show, okay? So you gotta show up to the interview. Uh, we gotta show up on time. Um, stay off your cell phone when you're in the interview. Um, don't come hungover. Um, I mean, those are, you're already about 90% of the way there, just if you get that, and that's not just for insurance. My brother owns a business, my sister-in-law owns a business, my, father, my stepdad owns a business, we all talk about it. It's ridiculous, okay, um, how many people just don't show up or show up an hour late or whatever it's gonna be. So those are the basics. Now, the part you actually really care about though, when you're in there, um, do a little bit of research on the company ahead of time. Um, you guys are you know, in a very lucky situation. We got this thing called Google. Um, so go ahead and just honestly look into the company real quick. Get to know the basics of the company. You can probably do a little bit of research on the person that's gonna be interviewing you. Um, and then when you're there, ask questions though. Um, a few key questions. Why do you like working here? So if, you're if, if I'm interviewing you and you're, we're talking about insurance, hey, why do you enjoy selling insurance? Like that's a really logical question for me to be able to answer. So ask those people, why do you, you know, what do you do, you, you know, how long have you been working here? What do you enjoy about working here? Um, I would ask about upward mobility. So hey, because you know, again, a challenge as a business owner is I don't want to give you a job if I know that you're just taking my paycheck right now and at night you're going home and looking for a better job. I want to give you a job knowing that we're going to work together for a long time and you're going to be in my company and sort of move up, right? So if you're asking me, hey, what's my opportunity for, mobi for upward mobility? What's my opportunity to get, to get a promotion and stay at this company long term? I'm definitely going to you know, be much more engaged with you than if this guy's sitting over here, hey, when can I, you know, how many vacation time do I get off? Um, something like that. So um, asking them questions about, you know, what do they enjoy doing? Um, do a little bit of research on the company, um, ask them about upper mobility. And then um, if you're able to meet some other people who, you know, around the company or shadow somebody, do that as well. Um, when you're there, you know, you and I are interviewing, hey, would it be all right if I come back, you know, and just look over someone's shoulder for, you know, half, for half a day tomorrow morning or something like that. And unless it's a company that's doing, you know, super high tech, FBI security kind of stuff, Nothing's that safe, okay? I mean, or nothing's that, you know, private. Sure, come look, come look over my shoulder. Those are engaging type of questions that is showing me that you actually want to work at my company, not just you're trying to find a job, if that makes sense. Two questions, man. So thank you for your questions. Um, I've got a couple things, but uh, before we get to those housekeeping items, let's give a round of applause to Jason Starkin for coming back. <laughs>